Hello, I'm Natalie Lindo and welcome to a Business Line special brought to you from the Arabian Travel Market 2021 in Dubai. It's the first in-person travel industry event to take place since the pandemic hit. In 2020, the size of the global travel and tourism market declined to 1.27 trillion euros, but its forecasts to rise this year to 1.4 trillion euros. And events like this are keen to highlight that as borders reopen, the industry is ready to recover from the impact of COVID. This year's theme for Arabian travel market was a new dawn for travel and tourism. Its physical return has been seen as a sign of positive things to come for the industry worldwide. The essence of tourism is face-to-face, -face, is a connection, personal and professional. This is why there was so much appetite from the industry. Density and social distancing regulations meant there was a maximum of 11,000 people in the halls at any one time. This event is the first step to recovery and we are optimistic that shortly things will be much better. 2020 was very difficult for all of us but this year hopefully we are back. And while it wasn't as busy compared to previous years, the overall sentiment was positive and hopeful. We will show the tourism industry that this is the end of the tunnel and as of this summer, travellers from all over the world will be able to do it again. It's been a tough 18 months for the industry with many hotels in Dubai weathering the storm by targeting the domestic market. There was a financial impact for all of the businesses uh, in that vicinity. And what we have seen in the transition period now, that there has been a big demand on the local community where we experience a lot of staycation business. The Arabian travel market 2021 has raised Dubai's profile as a safe destination for international industry events, but also as a key player in shaping the future of the travel and tourism sector in a post-pandemic world. As the host of the event, Dubai has demonstrated the strong partnerships between travel and tourism companies, airlines and hospitality groups have been a key factor in the Emirates being able to safely reopen for visitors. Jane Witherspoon sat down with CEO of Dubai Tourism, Issam Qasim. How are you feeling about having one of the first, if not the first, in-person industry events to take place here in Dubai? Uh, excited and proud. Um, I think it's just a sentiment of all the efforts that have been put into place from the private and public sector to ensure that we can have a safe event that can actually happen in the industry that we are so passionate about. It's been a very difficult year globally. You know, how do you think the industry has coped with COVID? I think from a local perspective, um, what the government did over here, which I thought was brilliant, was the way that they quickly went into a lockdown mode to ensure that the safety, now including the hygiene aspect, remains of paramount importance to us. I mean, in considering the fact that Dubai has always been, uh, or the UAE, has rated as in the top three safest countries in the world, the COVID situation added that one extra layer that needed to be really taken into consideration. So with that lockdown, it gave us a chance to really look after the sanitization of the entire city, making sure that we are managing the to and fro from home for emergency needs for everybody else, so that that's also been kept in check. However, in parallel, the city was quickly developing new policies and procedures to ensure that once things do open up, how can we go back to as normal a way yeah. of life as possible? Which post-pandemic solutions do you think are the most important and ones that specifically will be adopted here in the UAE and in particular in Dubai? I think the things that, that we need to make sure is PCR tests, I think, will remain part and parcel of travel for, for yeah. quite some time. Um, also masks. And the good thing is the self-policing of masks in Dubai. And, and people uh, tend to forget that we're a city that has about 80% of the population are non-native. And that 80% is made up of close to 200 different nationalities, different cultures, different backgrounds, but everyone working so well together to ensure that if you've forgotten your mask on your chin, they'll be like, excuse me, can you just pull that back up again? The vaccination program has been one of the biggest campaigns that have ever been rolled out. Yes. How important is it for that to be adopted globally and for people to really make sure that this gets rolled out quickly? It is definitely the, the future of, of uh, travel post-pandemic. I think going forward, again, 
the more countries get vaccinated, the more individuals get vaccinated, there are talks about um, vaccination passport or the antibodies passport, whatever it is that people will start looking at as the digitization of that to be able to say, I've got it, I've received it. You know, as well as being, you know, one of the major economic drivers globally, the, the travel industry, you know, I think it's very important for people's well-being, you know, their mental well-being, yes. to be able to go and travel and visit family, you know, go on their Agreed. holidays. I, I, I totally agree with you, because um, what we did during the first period of time after the lockdown, when we started to put these new policies out, we didn't want to open up still because I think the markets globally were still not there yet. So what we did was we actually launched a uh, in May a uh, domestic tourism drive yep. because we knew that there was a bit of that pent up uh, anxiety, yeah. right? People getting frustrated sitting within those four walls. Oh. So we opened it up with much stricter rules locally because we wanted people to be able to at least go out and about, enjoy the facilities and the hotels and stuff that the UAE and Dubai has to offer. Yeah. And we saw great success with that. Greece, Portugal and Italy are among some of the European countries slowly reopening to tourists. Like many other nations, they've launched multi-million euro promotional campaigns aimed at boosting their most valuable economic sector and enticing visitors to their holiday destinations. As restrictions are eased, tourists are returning to some of Europe's iconic destinations. Boosted by news that the EU plans to have its digital COVID-19 certificate operational by the 1st of July. The objective is to accept vaccinated people coming from outside the European Union with a vaccine recognised in the European Union. Tourism is the main driver of Greece's economy, accounting for 20% of its output. Last year, the industry slumped by more than 75% due to the pandemic. Greece is opening its sails. Greece is safe. Just like every year, Greece is awaiting its friends from abroad, this time with all the necessary health protocols and safety. Italy lost 121 billion euros in 2020 due to travel and tourism restrictions. But visitors have started to return. Everyone said to us that it's very noisy and very busy, but it's actually quiet, and the nickname Serenity is really taking on its full meaning. We feel very well here because it's not so crowded. With safety so important, it is hoped the new certificate could encourage more travel and save the jobs of millions of people dependent on the tourism industry. That's all we have time for in this edition of Business Line, but be sure to tune in next time for a roundup of the biggest business and investment stories from around the globe. I'll see you then.